Yeah. So this this is all setup stuff here, right? Clap when you want to like make sure it's like officially like you're already ready to do the thing. Um. So yeah. All right. We doing good here? Yeah. Dude. Dude. We're getting bigger and better. Bigger and better. What do you got there in front of you? In front of me. Yeah. My mic? Yeah, new mic. Well, check this out. <laughs> Let there be light. Yeah. We're looking good. I, I hope so. We're looking good. Hope so. All right. And, uh, well, I guess we're live. We're live. Welcome to uh, Two Rights Make a Wrong. That is Daniel. That's Russell. Um, and welcome back to uh, another week. Yeah. Um. So first things first here, it's starting to become a pattern. I need to... Uh, Man, you got to stop this. I need to apologize to my boy, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I uh, I definitely said that I wanted to cup his balls last time. <laughs> and I don't mean that in the way that it sounds. How How else could you mean that? Well, I think last time we were talking about like me cupping his balls would basically be my advantage to win in a fight against oh, him. Yeah, but you just want to cup his balls but I just think, intimately. But I think but I think I just like kind of paused and I just said the phrase I want to cup his balls. Ah. <laughs> well, so I I don't want to do that. You don't. It is I mean, clear. yeah, no. Would you? I mean, if I had to. If I What if, if he, he just was, asked you? If he asked me to cup his balls, I'm I think I might. Okay. I think I might. Good to know. Was, you know, speaking of The Rock, he uh, he has apparently recently trademarked a lot of things. Like he's taken out like, like he's buying trademarks of like things he said in the past or something. Yeah. Here, let me let me pull up the full list of everything that The Rock has trademarked, and it's kind of absurd. Okay, but so maybe maybe if he's trademarked this stuff, maybe. Say it with synonyms, so we all know what you're talking about. I can't. I can't. <laughs> uh, so he's got. So he has legally acquired these names: The Rock, Jabroni, Candy Ass. If you smell what The Rock is cooking, wait. That he's he's coined that as a name for himself, or just well, the... he's 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 legally acquired the names and phrases. The phrases, okay. Okay, so Rocky Maivia, is that is that correct? Yeah. Rudy Pooh. Rudy, Ru- Rudy, Rudy Pooh. Rudy Pooh. The Samoan Sensation. Yeah. The Great One. The, yeah. Team Corporate. Okay. The People's Elbow. Wait, did he do uh, did yeah. he do the People's Elbow? Because he's the People's Champion. Oh, I thought I thought Which is also copyrighted, by the way, the People's Champion. Ah, obviously. Um The People's Elbow. Uh, the blue chipper, okay. blue hell, rock apocalypse, project rock, yeah. rock nation. Which I feel like I don't know how he'd get the 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 legal representation for. I mean, rock nation. I think the same way he got the legal representation for all of them paying but, for it but it just sounds like other people would have had the rock nation including the next one which is just simply the nation okay the uh the brahma bull uh, and i already said the people's champion you know your role and shut your mouth team bring it the rock just bring it rock bottom finally The Rock has come back to, it doesn't matter what, and the millions and millions. Oh, and the most electrifying man in sports and entertainment. So what does that actually mean, having trademarks for this? Does that mean he's the only person who can make money off of those phrases? Yeah, I don't exactly know. And speaking of trademarks, too, I mean... I'm just curious. So there's like the T M, which is trademark. Yep. What's the R? Registered trademark. Regi- what's the difference? I don't know. Okay. 
Um, I don't know. I think technically some of it, I think it might be um, the difference between like a business and like maybe a property. Okay. As opposed um like a product and a property, like maybe that's the difference. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. Mm. All right. Hey, Nigel, can you just make sure I pressed record on that camera, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> Do I have to go through all <laughs> if I had to go through well, all we of those we things got that. again. We got that. That would have been so funny. Yeah. 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 Perfect. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, so register trademark TM. Um, I thought there was more of them too. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. So how much do you think he spent on trademarking all of those? Oh, I don't know. Do you think it's over or under a million dollars? Oh, over. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because some of the stuff is stuff that existed, which is probably ex- expensive, and then some of the stuff is pro- is like n- new things that no one has ever thought of doing before. So then those ones probably aren't a lot. Like, what can we trademark? Uh, I would say first things first. We should probably trademark our names, Russell and well, Daniel. I mean, like two rights make a wrong. Okay. Ham Chad. Ham Chad. Ham Chad Studios. Ham Chad Studios. All right. Makes sense. Yeah. Um. <coughs> oh, and before I forget, I, I I am sorry. I did not introduce them earlier. Oh, yeah. But we are here once again with uh, Nigel and Lilo. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're in camera, if you want to actually get in there and show uh-huh. your face. Your much well-heeled face, surprisingly. It is not doing too bad. Huh? Yeah. Um. So, this is... This is um this is their third time joining us. This is their third time joining us. Um it's ki- it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like uh, a third date, you know. Oh yeah. Sure. And you kind of everybody knows what happens during a third date. Ball know? cupping. We kind of we kind of make it official here. So I would like to extend extend our hand out um and officially welcome them to the Two Right Crew. Oh, trademarked. Not to be confused with the Two Live Crew. Which is yeah, well, <laughs> which is probably trademark. welcome, um, s- guys. Uh, we did plan on having an official microphone for you today. Yes, but uh, we the dropped cord. the ball. And we didn't have a cord. Yeah, the cord that I had. It's an because his interface has two XLR inputs and then two quarter inch inputs. So I brought an XLR to quarter inch cord, but it's a male end and of XLR, and the uh, the microphone is also a male end. So. They're, they're not gay. If you don't love us, just say that. What? I said, yeah. if you don't love us, just say that. <laughs> no, we do. You interrupted we're, his gay joke. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how does your performance socks feel inside of Crocs, by the way? They like, feel that like. That just sounds like you're just absurd. Like, oh, I, d- I wasn't planning on wearing my Crocs on camera. So you just. So you just, oh, that's fine, because I was going to ask, like, you, you got the performance socks, like, does it help the performance when you put the Crocs in sport mode? Yeah, in four-wheel drive mode. Yeah. Crocs is also trademarked. Son of a biscuit, this episode. This is, uh, <laughs> guess we know what the name of this episode is. <laughs> Demonetized. Two rights, <laughs> two, two rights <laughs> get sued. Yeah. Don't give them any ideas. Um, so what else has been going on? How have you been? Right. <laughs> Two rights make a loss. <laughs> I've been all right. I've been all right. Um, so, mom and dad came down and visited uh, us down in, in, in the where we live. Is this? This is the story this that is mom the story. has tried telling you over and over again. So, mind you, this was like a couple weeks ago, and our mom kept asking, like, did, did Daniel tell you this story? And I had to finally say to her, I was like, mom, like you realize, like, we're trying to like make a business here out of the two of us telling each other stories right (laughs) just calm down yeah so what so tell tell me tell me this story so dad went to the bathroom we're playing games dad goes to the bathroom and he comes out of the bathroom and he's just chuckling and we're like oh what he goes i plugged your toilet and jenna did not laugh and I was like, "Are you serious?" I wasn't sure if I should laugh either. Because why? If he was serious, wait, hold on, hold on. Why? Yeah. Why is this? 
kind of a surprise like it's dad like that's his goal in life is to plug every toilet well like why is it like do you have special toilets that no this shouldn't be happening well we didn't have a plunger <laughs> oh we had no plunger dad thought he could just fist it out <laughs> he literally was just like i can just punch it he's like i can go in there and i can just punch it and it should go down i'm like i don't think that's gonna work i'm like have you ever done that before and he's like no i'm like then why in the world do you think that that's something that's gonna work <sighs> like why why so but it was like it's a fisting the poop shoot yeah, takes it was a like, whole different meaning right there it was like 10 15 at night walmart is 12 minutes away and closes at 11 okay and so that was like the closest place to our house that we thought we could get a plunger we just didn't make dad fist it no, I did not make dad fist it because I didn't think it would work. I did not have faith in his theory. Have you guys heard of a poop knife? A poop knife? So is, that's a thing. Is it like the water, it like squirts water no. at high pressure? So no. There's a thing, I guess this exists now. It's a knife that you keep in your bathroom for cutting poop. It's. I think it's a Reddit thing. Okay. So, so wait. So wait, what am I cutting poop from? Like in the toilet to break it up, or like if I'm if it's having if it's having problems dropping, and I just kind of like play doh it out. Just... Whatever you need it for. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's Whatever. that would be a poop scissors, poop not scissors. a not a poop knife, which we should trademark. Poop scissors. Poop scissors. Okay. Yeah, that first thought the poop scissors sounds a lot easier than also needing a poop fork. Yeah. <laughs> poop. <laughs> New definition to poop poop platter too. No. Poop, poop cutlery. Yeah. So, but yeah, so we ran to Walmart really quick, and they were actually locking the- vegetarians the... get a salad poop fork? No. <laughs> anyway, you're going to Walmart. So we go to Walmart, and they're, they're like locking the indoors, and so we're going to go into the outdoors, which don't open from the outside. Someone has to, need, has to be walking out for them to open. So someone was walking out, so we like rush in there. And, you know, they have, like, the greeters at Walmart. Sometimes they're old. Sometimes they're special needs, whatever. Well, there was a greeter who was, like, had Down syndrome. And he's just, like, he goes over to, like, one of the other security guards. He's like, they just came in the out. They just came in the out. They can't do that. And he, he's just like, it's fine. It's fine. So we go in there. But, like, we're, like, we're, like, where are the plungers? We found the plungers. They had two options. I made Dad buy me, like, the luxury option. The luxury plunger. Yeah. So well, instead of just being like this kind, it had like a T handle that you can really like really drive in there. And so I made him get it. And it had a bowl that you can put the plunger into so you don't have to drip all over the place. So got that one. Got home. Plunged the toilet. Wait, I, there's no interaction between an entire family of people walking into Walmart at almost 11 o'clock buying a singular plunger it wasn't a whole it. family it was me and dad the other two the ladies stayed home and drank wine yeah yeah sounds... but yeah but also i was just like sitting here i'm like yeah like we're we're rushing in last minute fast walk have you ever seen dad walk faster than just a walk no well he did and it's kind of funny but yeah, but just two of us like rushing to try to find this plunger to get out of there. Yeah, people were probably like, oh, they had some sort of emergency. But let me tell you, that is not the worst poop emergency that we've had in our house. So that's that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the story that mom wanted to tell you so badly. It was worth it. Was it worth it? Sure. Okay. I got a good laugh out of it. Good. I mean... I still like the idea of an entire family walking in to buy a singular plunger at closing time. Yeah. A single like I was hoping that well, I was hoping your down syndrome greeter was going to be like, "Hey, what are you guys doing here today?" And yeah. you're like, "We need a plunger." We and he's like, "These guys need a plunger." Yeah. That like been, I was really hoping he was going to like yeah. make a big deal about it. That would have been And he could have lead he probably could have led us right to it too. Yeah. Yeah, which we we were like searching for a while. Oh, but I was going to check Hot Wheels cars because Every time I go somewhere with Hot Wheel cars, my girlfriend, she doesn't really – I have, like, 3,500 Hot Wheel cars yeah, in packages. Yeah, you need to. And she doesn't really want me buying anymore. Yeah, that makes so sense. So my only opportunity to do that is when I'm alone, which I'm never alone in a store with Hot Wheel cars. Look at you. 
Yeah, I know. I did that, so anyway. there's no glare. Yeah, don't leave you alone with Hot Wheels cars. So I was like, oh, wow, I'm at a store with Hot Wheel cars without Jenna, so I'm going to go check out the Hot Wheel cars. And I completely forgot because we were in a rush. And Dad's like, well, do you want to go back in and check? I'm like, no, we're already out of the store. We're probably yeah, going to go get tackled this time. Go rush in. <laughs> go rush in past, past the greeter. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was. <laughs> you guys walk in by one plunger and one Hot Wheel car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 1967 Batmobile. Yeah. Well, I needed to replace the Hot Wheel car that got clogged in the toilet, obviously. There's a story there. Is this, is this something to have to do with, like, why is there a Hot Wheel car in, clogged in the toilet? Is this no? There, there wasn't. That was just, that was just the, that was the story that I would tell the people at the oh why I'm buying a plunger and a single Hot Wheel car. I thought it was, it was a joke. I thought you, you had. It's okay to laugh. I thought. Well, no, I thought <laughs> I didn't get that it was a joke. I thought you were saying that, like, yeah, you had because you said this wasn't the worst poop incident. Oh no! And then you said something about a Hot Wheel car. I thought oh. maybe your dildos for everybody kind of took a little uh, adventurous turn there. No, that didn't happen. No. Did you – do you know about the poop explosion that happened in our basement? Is this separate than the one we told? Did we tell it? On the episode for the bomb box? Yeah. We've told the bomb box yeah, story. Yeah, the bomb box. Yeah, no, this is different. Yeah. No, I don't – So this was last winter, probably about a year ago. It was February, I believe. And I was up here. And I came, I came, went back down, and I got home. Gina was out with a friend. I go upstairs and flush the toilet upstairs of the house. And I go downstairs, and the floor is wet downstairs coming out of the downstairs bathroom. I'm like, what the heck? Well, that toilet was overflowing. So whatever came out from the upstairs bathroom was coming out of the toilet downstairs. I plunged this thing for like an hour. Nothing's going down which by the way hold on a second i had a plunger where did my plunger go that we needed to rush out and get a plunger so i must have had a plunger somewhere in the house well dad didn't need to run out and buy me a luxury plunger so i'm glad we so now you have a rogue plunger yeah no, i gotta find out where this plunger is because well so because uh, the thing was too why I th why both me and my girlfriend didn't think we had a plunger is because she doesn't believe People in should plunging. Be, well, she doesn't believe that people should be plugging toilets. Should people should just be all so, natural. So it's just like no one should be plugging toilets. So therefore, there's no need for a plunger. Just don't plug the toilet. It's just a thing you don't do in her. In like, po do her, Polish people not? I guess they don't. I don't. They know. don't plug toilets because I don't think her her parents don't have a plunger at their house because I've plugged their toilets multiple times. And then just luckily it just sits for a while and then finally rushes down. <laughs> so if a Polish, Polish people like get a toilet clog, it's just fucking over. I was going to say, can <laughs> like, you <laughs> move, you just move. We <laughs> plug the toilet, we got to move. move. You know what? Out of all the things that we could ever potentially have you Google, can you Google do Polish people clog toilets? <laughs> yeah. Um, but let us know what you find out. You can, you can interrupt us. Yeah, but... But I was plunging this toilet for like an hour. I was sweating profusely. I told her, I'm like, I call her up. She's like, do you need me to come home? I'm like, well, there's nothing you can do. But the but the water that was coming out of the toilet was going through the hardwood floor in the hallway, through the floor into the basement and just dripping all over everything. So that sucked. And then her dad came over a little bit. She got home, called her dad over, and um, we had like clean out valves on the horizontal pipe where everything was leading so we wanted to see where the problem was so we unscrewed those let them leak out then we did the one down the row let that leak out and then finally it was the water was below like the circle of the clean out so now he's trying to get more out though and he's essentially like fingering this hole fingering poop out of this hole to, into like a bucket and i'm just sitting here like oh, oh. here i'm gonna interrupt you real quick yeah you said that if there was ever a lull and we didn't know what to talk about, I got to bring up your shirt. I'm just going to bring that up so we stop talking about poop and fisting and fingering it. No, we're not. No, we got. Yes. I have to finish the story. <laughs> so, but then when we this, find out about Polish people clogging toilets, it doesn't seem to be confirmed. It's I not confirmed. Okay. What, what about are there plungers in Poland? I 
Google, do Polish people use toilet plungers? And so far, I'm not really finding any information okay. about whether or not. Okay. So, this might just be their family. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> they just, they did it. they just like, uh, gotta move. And yeah. They just get a different house. Yeah. But they've they been they've been in this house a long time, like thirty years. So I mean, so I mean, I guess they just don't clog toilets. But, but anyways, Good but then them. the horizontal pipe leads into a vertical pipe that then leads to a pipe that goes to the sewer in the street. Okay. And long story short, what we ended up finding out was that pipe outside it was like cast iron. It was severed. So all of the stuff that we've just been flushing was just piling up into the ground and then backing up. But there's also clean out on this vertical pipe down here. And so we made a shield. I was holding a bucket and he's turning the thing to get stuff to start spraying out of it essentially. And he gets it. I'm like, I let's not play fast, fast and loose with this. Just, just let it leak. If it takes two hours to leak out, just let it do that. He's like, well, I'll go a little bit more. I'm like, oh. So he goes a little bit more. It's coming out faster. I'm like, I think that's good. He's like, I'll go a little bit more. He goes a little bit more. And it's spraying out into our faces, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. It was disgusting. Can you just talk about the Earth Nation? And then he turns it a little bit more, and this cap just blows off, and everything flies at me. I spin around in a circle. Bucket flies out of my hand. Poop everywhere. Feces just all over the floor. Luckily, her mom is a hospice nurse and had a bunch of diapers stored in our basement, adult diapers. So that made the cleanup relatively easy. But I was not happy. I'm just standing there covered. And I'm just like, I told him not to do it. Oh, so mad. Yeah, so that's the worst poop story that I've had. It's the worst poop story we're ever going to have. Probably. So, but do you, yeah, so Earth Nation. So. No. Now we're done. Yeah. I think we just lost, dude. What do you mean? We just we lost. Just, you just lost everybody. I, I don't you just know. lost everybody. People love poop stories. I don't know about that. Nigel was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got me and, there, dog. And he's a great representation of everyone. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um. So yeah. Anyway. Um. I want. I do want to talk about. Let's break the fourth wall here, for a second fifth wall we're kind of in the fourth wall already right i mean we we address we the talked people. to the can yeah the camera so, so fifth pe the fifth wall is there one is there walls beyond the fourth wall see but okay can i ask you a question though is it is it breaking the fourth wall if we're, we are clearly in the world they're in and it's not like we are make-believe so i thought make-believe is breaking over to the audience that they shouldn't know exists that are watching them right? yeah that's why i'm asking what's beyond the fourth wall well wouldn't it be just we're just we're just in it we're it's not it wouldn't be beyond it would it well or now we're getting meta maybe that's what i'm talking about i don't know i don't, okay, I don't know so what that means Google, uh, what's, what it specifically means to break the fourth wall. we're beyond like what's beyond the fourth wall but anyway while we have that answer we went live we did go live. We were alive. We this did go is, live. Um, we went live on Leap Day. We went, went live on Leap Day. That way we don't have to celebrate anniversaries until for like four years from now. Yeah, so when we say like where do we want to be a year from now, we really have four years to reach those goals. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> we gave ourselves a really big gap. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy. Yeah, me too. I'm happy. So thanks, guys. Yeah, that's that's all. Uh, that's all you. We've had. Uh, I, I feel what was a pretty warm res reception. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty. I was surprised at how much we actually got got watched in our first 24 hours. Yeah, I was watching that like a hawk. You were? Yeah. Yeah, I watched it like three times. <laughs> no, not what? Not the episode. I watched it twice, oh. but I I was watching the numbers, the, no. the analytics of the video for like the whole 24 hours. I uh, I listen to um, the YouTube, which is Ham Chad Studios. Ham Chad Studios is um, where is where we're posting. I uh, uh, I watched that twice, and then I watched our Spotify, which is Two Rights Make a Wrong on Spotify. Um, I watched that once, or listened to it. 
Yeah. There's no video for Spotify. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, we did good. We did. I think we did pretty good. Um. So. Um. You know, this is episode four. Um, it's the button that looks like a camera. Yeah, that I just saw yeah. it right before. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is episode four. Um, you know, releasing episode one in our timeline two days ago. Yeah. Um, we're a little, we're a little different and ahead of our schedule here. Yeah, I think what's the plan? We're going to release. So I know we released on a Thursday, the first one, but it was leap day, yep. special occasion. But we're going to be releasing on Wednesdays yep. every other week. For now. For now. For every every other week right for now until yeah. until we can uh, ramp up more. Yeah, at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on every other Wednesdays. Yeah. Stay tuned. Which people won't know that for two months. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, two months Cause, later, cause when this, this comes out, come out yeah. we'll uh, we'll discuss in another two months. We'll discuss how we've been doing again. Yeah, and and with that, so since we launched, we're talking about launching. Um, I have a bottle of scotch. Yeah, here that neither of us have ever tried before. You you haven't even tried it. I have not tried this. Oh, what is it? It's Lagavulin, but it's the eight year. Okay, so we're both familiar with the sixteen. Yeah. Uh, I also have the Offerman edition, which we've had, and I have the Distillers edition, which I don't know if you did have. Um, but which this is the one that tasted like I never wanted to drink. That it. was the Offerman edition, yeah. unfortunately, because you love him so much. I do like Nick Offerman. Yeah. He's a funny dude. Just I didn't enjoy his scotch. Sorry, yeah. Nick. Um, so if uh, Nigel and Lilo – so I grabbed two glasses. Do you guys want to partake in our celebration? Okay, could could one of you run upstairs and just ask uh, our mother to grab two glasses, if that's not too much hassle? That that almost looks like it's like a bottle of wine. The color of it, yeah, yeah. The color color of the bottle and 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 of like I don't I mean obviously the scotch might be a different color when it comes out but I mean the this bottle is has a greenish tint to it. Oh, I'm gonna like this. I hope so. I'm probably gonna like this. I hope we all like it. I like Islay. Yes, you do. Which all Lagavulin is? Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. All right, so to answer your question about the fourth wall. Oh, yeah, f fourth wall. I forgot about this. So the Thank fourth you. wall break is characters being aware of the audience and talking to it. A fifth wall break is the characters being aware of the writer and talking to them. Oh, oh. see, there is a fifth wall. Yeah. See, I didn't know that. Well, see, that's kind of what you guys do. Comment on the, um, the YouTube. Um, it helps us out. Um It'll help you out in the long run because you'll get more of us eventually. Um, so yeah, like, sub, subscribe, or, or sub, sub and subscribe are the same thing. Like, subscribe, share. Yeah, comment, comment, concerns. If you get mean, we might read it out loud. I know you have ice from that. I have ice here, yeah. So, do you want that much ice in it? So this is a single malt uh, scotch uh, of the Islay region, and this is the eighth year of the Lagavulin. Um, we have tried others of this particular brand before. My brother seems to enjoy it. Um, we he has what was it the the reserved i have the distillers edition distillers edition the offerman edition the offerman edition which, which is, is nick, made made yeah. by nick offerman yeah, nick offerman owns a good chunk of lagavulin so he has his edition that he comes out with everyone cheers cheers here's we're getting going What do you think? That's pretty good. It is pretty good. Do you want an ice cube in it? Um, yes, please. Yeah. 
Oh, that just reminded me. Thanks for touching my ice. You're welcome. That was one of the most absurd random encounters we've ever had in my entire life, I think. What? So what is it when you go to a restaurant and you drink and you order a drink okay. that is not alcoholic, what do you order? A diet cola with no ice. Yeah. And we were at this one restaurant. <laughs> yeah. And this lady comes and she brings your diet cola with ice. And you said, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I asked for no ice. Not rudely. No, no, no. Yeah. No. And her, her very politely, mind you, decided that you shouldn't have ice. So she was about one centimeter away from literally plunging her hand into your cup, taking the ice out of your cup. That is exactly what she she's just like do you want me to scoop it out in your i'm just like no no i i would like you to bring me a diet cola that just never had ice in it yeah it was <laughs> one of the most bizarre things i've ever seen anyone try yeah. in in for this wait staff yeah no yeah that another weird that reminds me of another story i don't think you were there for this uh but we were at a restaurant and i asked for with my hamburger I asked for spear pickles, Mm -hmm. which I like taking like a ratio of burger bite and then a bite of the pickle. You're weird. I am weird. I don't care, but I enjoy it. It's it's what I am enjoying my meal the way that I want to enjoy it. And the person brings a plate full of chip pickles with a spear through it. (laughs) And, And all of us look at this, make a face. The waiter walks away. We all start laughing, and he comes back like 15 seconds later and just like, that's not what you meant, is it? And we're like, no. He goes, what did you want? I'm like, you know, like the the long pickles that are cut in quarters that like you put in Bloody Marys? Like that's, that's what I want, a spear pickle. And he goes, oh, yeah, I can get those for you. And he's like, do you want me to take these pickles away? I'm like, well, you can leave them. It's fine. Someone will eat them. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you, what you going to do with them now? And it's not like, and it's not like I needed probably him. probably going to put them back. And the thing, I, it's not like I needed him to get me the spear pickles over the chip pickles. But since he came back and asked what I was talking about, I told him what I was talking about. He's like, I can get those. But I'm like, I would have eaten these pickles. It's not like I'm that picky where I needed him to take them away from me. They weren't offensive to me. But it was hilarious that he thought I wanted him to stab a series of pickles. Could have even been better yet if they were on like a legitimate spear, like a pike, like <laughs> yeah. a javelin. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't think TJ Fridays has a javelin in their kitchen. Not in the kitchen, but they might have one out in the lobby. TJ Fridays is always like that sports. Like they always try to do like a local sports vibe inside of them don't they oh yeah i suppose they could have a job ja- yeah like, they could have like, a javelin on like the just wall just ha- hanging on the wall for the that's track, very true the track and field team that's very true for whatever town you were in it's like yeah i order spear pickles and also we see this guy getting out like a wrench and he's like unwrenching a, a spear from a javelin yeah. from the wall it's like what does this guy do i just want pickles what is this guy doing he's like interrupting an entire family he's like sorry this guy needs this and waiter if that if you're watching this and that was you and you know that comment let us know Okay, so let's let's divide some people here. Let's okay. divide. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about your shirt. Oh yeah, my shirt. Uh, but but before we talk about that necessarily, let's let's get your official review. And at the, the at the time of recording, the freshly released Avatar: The Last Airbender live action Netflix adaptation. It, the first episode had me, and I was like, there are some things that I'm like, not, okay, it could be better. But the first episode happened, and I was like, I'm on board. Yes, I'm on board. Second episode, still on board. Third episode, some things were getting a little bit creative freedom. It wasn't until the episode with Boomy, where they just absolutely ruined his character, 
where I was like, you all said right. he was like an old crotchety old man, right? He was. He was. I mean, he's always been insane. Well, yeah. But he was. He was insane, and like he he essentially like he didn't even like Aang. Like he what he wasn't like being their best friends. friends. Right. He wasn't being Aang's best friend. He wasn't messing with Aang. He was legit like. Like kill me or I'm gonna kill you, kind of a thing. Like this is, and he got mad. Like he was actually mad and angry, and he didn't believe that the world was ever gonna be saved. He wasn't the he wasn't this like crazy, quirky, prankster and and wise king like he was in the cartoon. He was he was just nuts. Yeah, which I didn't like that because I thought he was a great character in the show. How, how was Iro? I, wrote, I, I feel like Iro makes or break the series. Iro is very good. He wasn't as funny. He was a little bit. His humor was a little drier. Uh, he was a little bit more serious with some of the humor parts, uh, but he was still a great character. Loved him. I actually think that that was probably the best actor in in the show, and the one that you could actually take seriously, because um, a lot of the acting. I'm not even. I don't. It wasn't good. But I don't want to say it was just straight up bad. I don't think that they actually got across the same persona that the characters had in in the cartoon. Do would would you say would you say that it looked like you were watching people perform a play on camera? I would say it was play acting. Yeah. yeah see, it was play I acting. I feel that that's a very good assessment. That has that's the problem with a lot of the Netflix shows, mm. uh, the live actions. Even, like, for instance, we'll bring this one up, uh, One Piece. Yeah, I knew you were going to go. The live action One Piece was just really good, but still it was like I was watching, like, what was uh, what was that Canadian show? Lazy Town? Is that what that children, that children's? The girl with the pink hair? Yeah, the girl with the pink hair and that weird villain with the mustache, the French villain. I've with never you, seen it. The mustache. Yeah, it's called Lazy Town, and it's just kind of like colorful and oddly. And it's almost like watching um, uh, uh, a series of unfortunate events. Like, it's very, it's, it, um, when that, that show was meant to look like that. But these were like, it's a very isolated set. It's almost like, yeah. Netflix show reminds me that I'm watching a stage play just on camera. And I don't necessarily enjoy a lot of that direction for some yeah, things. I don't like it for many things. Stage acting is not my favorite thing, period, even on stage. I understand the point of it on stage. It works in Star Trek. Does it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's my overall assessment. It's definitely way better than M. Night Shyamalan's take. Because, like, earthbending was actually earthbending. Like, like it wasn't people doing a synchronized dance. And then all of a sudden this rock just comes hovering across the screen like oh, it did in his movie. I heard a that theory terrible, about terrible. that. I heard a couple theories. About the M. Night? Yeah. Okay. So the M. Night Shyamalan one was, um, it's actually, it's not, you're not watching the actual events of Aang and crew. You're actually watching the stage play. That they put on and remember the stage play? Oh, yeah. That's why everything looks campy. Okay. I mean, that's someone. I think that's just someone trying to save. That's just somebody trying to say, save, save it. M9, but yeah, that yeah. totally makes sense in the season three stage play. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you, um, but do you have an actual story about the Earth Kingdom? Well, I, sure I do. I do. So, it was right after I watched the first episode. Uh, Gina caught me doing something very embarrassing compromising if you will and what would that be so i was upstairs in my office and she's coming up the stairs and when you come up the stairs you can see right into my door in my office and i see her out of the corner of my eye she freezes in the in were you the trying to blood bend your dick <laughs> that's not what i was doing no um but she freezes on the staircase and i freeze looking at her she's like what are you doing and i'm just like nothing it's like, what are you doing? It's like, I'm earth bending. I was literally sitting there. I'm just like, <laughs> like in my office. Like, I was just, I was just in it. I was into it. I was just like, yeah, this is awesome. Because like the earth bending in the show was so much better. I was like, I was into it, and I was just like, yeah. So. She caught me, and she's just like, and I am now single. And I'm like, no, really? <laughs> and she's like, well, no, just don't 
don't do that anymore. <laughs> She's okay with me bending. I've been bending a lot, a lot lately. Yeah. yeah. So you're an earth bender. I would say off this show, yeah, I think earth bending is what really got me, the earth bending. Hmm. But there was like the fire bending. Um, they up powered the fire bending, unlike M Night where he downplayed it. Oh, that was so bad. So because I hated that. That was the worst part about that movie, in my opinion, was the fact that the firebenders needed a source of fire. Yeah. It was so infuriating. But like in the cartoon, um a couple of the great benders, like Azula, uh um Ozai could propel themselves through the air with fire. But in this show it seemed like just almost all of them could. Because the, the episode where they go and wipe out the airbenders where they're way up there, they literally all just go, are you all ready? And they just go, Poof, and they all just, like, blast off into the into the sky. If you guys if you guys could bend elements, what would you, what do you, what would, what would, what would you bend? I'd be an airbender. You're an airbender? Air nomad? I feel like I give off earthbender vibes. But I also tell me otherwise if I'm wrong about that. I, I I think I think I would be a I think I would be a water bender. But I think according to like the zodiacs and all that type of stuff, like I'm Earth. I'm an Earth sign, right? Okay. So I would be I an Earth bender. Tell you. I suppose. I mean, based on mine, I would be an air bender. But... Yeah. Fair enough. I would either be an air bender or a water bender. But because again, we the thing I like about water bending. Is the blood bending, which is flipping dope. Mm. Fair enough. I could flip and boil someone's wa- blood, mm-hmm. uh, control them, whatever. But also, I mean, you can. To be fair, you could boil somebody's blood as an airbender too. I guess that's taking the air out of it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. So but the but the air bending, you could take the air out of their lungs. You could just create a vacuum around mm-hmm. them. There's things that you could actually do that they don't necessarily really show. I mean, it's a kid show. I mean, as an earthbender, you could control metal and then you just rip the iron out, iron of, their out of their body yeah you but know. yeah i mean that's you have to be really let's good. make a rated r like, yeah let's make a rated r because I'm, th- I'm just sitting here thinking like if i was an earthbender like somebody could just be getting on my nerves and i'll just earthbend like a like a piece of the floor from under them just hit him right in the dick yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's. I mean, that's exactly what it would be used for, too. You if you're know? a water bender, you can you know, just water water bend some water on their pants, and it look like they pissed themselves. But, <laughs> if you wanted, but you could blood bend them, make them punch themselves in the penis. Ooh. You could do that. Yeah. Like, uh, that would be crazy. Um. So yeah. So that's that's the that's the thing that she caught me doing. I was, I was just earth bending like I crazy. Also, I also saw a theory that said that Katara was supposed to be the Avatar. I mean, I don't know why that would be a theory. I don't know either. Because apparently if Aang wouldn't have trapped himself in the ice for 100 years, his natural lifespan would have put him at about the age that Katara was born. So, okay. like, they, like I, I guess, like, they think that if it wasn't for the fact that Aang didn't die, or, yeah, if, because if Aang didn't do that, she would have become the next avatar, but he didn't die, so there was no new avatar born. That makes sense. I can I can see that theory happening, because she was probably one of the most naturally gifted waterbenders. She was mostly self-taught. Yeah. So um, that's pretty cool. I I haven't heard that one. That's that's a cool one. How are you doing on One Piece? Well, how far are you in One Piece? Like episode thirty, the uh, they they just Zoro just lost to that guy. So. For all our fans out there that want to jump on board with us, he just started watching One Piece. I am one thousand percent balls deep into One Piece already. Yeah, he is. He is as big of a fan of One Piece as I am a fan of Avatar: The Last Airbender. The only thing is, is I get like ninety episodes of the Airbender, and he has a thousand and ninety-two episodes of One Piece that he can watch at a minimum. Yeah. And it's still running. So you're you're working your way through One Piece, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about that on here because it it's one of my favorite things in the world is to mm-hmm. see other people watching One Piece. So I'm gonna try not to spoil anything. We're gonna try to stick along his timeline of things on uh, One Piece. But warning, One Piece spoiler alert, just for future reference, forever. 
I was actually gonna bring that up earlier if you if we needed to put in a a, a spoiler warning for the for the last Airbender uh, remake that y'all were just talking about. Um. You know what? I don't care. Actually, uh, I can tell you, I personally got yelled at by a friend for our first episode. <laughs> that because I apparently in the first episode I said uh, we when we were talking about the Matrix, the Matrix and the new Matrix movie, I said that I simply just said out loud that Trinity was the one, and he's like, "Bro, Trinity spoiler alert!" I was like, "Dude, this shit's not even new." I was gonna say, "Bro, it, what's it like? Almost like twenty years old, if not long." Oh, no, 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 no. The new one is only like two years old. Oh, okay. The, I didn't know the, it was the new one. Yeah, yeah. the newest one. Well, well even then, spoiler alert, Nigel. Trinity is the one now. Cool. Well, even, okay. Well, the, the thing is, even then, I, I feel like there is just a certain period of time where, after a while, it's just like, all right, if you haven't watched it by now, yeah. Everybody. That's that's how we feel about. It. I I feel that way about a lot of things too. There are some. <laughs> well, excuse me. There are some things I do like, like with One Piece, for instance. Like if there's a lot to go over, and yeah. there's a lot of mystery, and like the whole appeal to it is the adventure. So I, I try not to spoil. I, I, I might just simply tell you things if you ask me questions, but I, yeah. I, I, I won't. I'm not going to intentionally spoil things just to be a dick. Makes sense. So, uh, yeah. Because speaking of that, though, with uh, the Avatar: Last Airbender. The Netflix series is that again. The show, the cartoon, is more than a decade old. Yeah. Okay. It's like fifteen years old now. Um. So in that sense, there's no spoilers. They're following the same story. There's no spoilers. However, there's a new audience watching the Netflix. Yep. So, spoiler alert. I do want to talk about my favorite like creative freedom that they took in changing part of the story. That I actually really liked, and it actually, like, it really, I think it made this moment so much more than what it was. So, spoiler alert, skip ahead maybe two, three minutes. Um, But it was the episode in the cartoon when Zuko's taking his crew through the storm trying to chase uh, the Avatar. And the crew doesn't respect him and thinks that he doesn't care about them at all whatever and then Iroh explains to them how he got a scar because it was the Agni Kai with his dad he wouldn't face him and all that kind of stuff so like he knows a lot about sacrifice and discipline and all that kind of stuff so please respect him and then they started respecting him and that was that was that and but but how the Agni Kai happened was that he spoke out because he didn't want his dad to send a new recruit like rookie soldiers to the front line to essentially be sacrificed and he spoke out against that so that's what happened in the cartoon. The same thing happened in the live action. However, what gained the respect, it was the 41st unit that they were going to send to the front lines as a sacrifice. He spoke out against it. And then when his dad banished him to find the Avatar, his crew, because he cared so much about them, was the 41st Division. And so then Iroh tells him, that's how you got placed on this crew without oh, actually getting goosebumps talking about it. Cause I actually thought that was a great addition to the story. So he told him that like your lives have been spared and you owe your lives to Zuko. So respect him because he, that's why he's on this mission and that's why you're here with him. Yeah. I kind of wish this was all something I watched. Oh, well, you could have told me. Explained to me. You could have told me. Well, I didn't know what you were going to say. So See, I, I didn't. <laughs> Well, I thought you because you actually I was made hoping com- you, you were made gonna, comments like, about the show, so I thought you actually did watch it. I thought uh, you about the live action. It. Yeah, I haven't you made, com- you made comments about it. Sorry, I haven't made any comments. I said about spoiler alert. That. You could have plugged your ears. No. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. So anyway, but that's nice. Yeah, I thought that was a really cool addition. Cool. Yeah. So what's happening in One Piece? Where are you at? The the restaurant boat. Yeah, I don't know all the names. There's so many names going on. Yeah, but Zoro just lost to the greatest swordsman that he's been trying to hunt down. To Mihawk, yeah. To Mihawk, yeah. And so I don't he, know. He lost. I don't know if I'd officially say that he was hunting him down necessarily. I'm just saying. Well, they called was, him a pirate hunter. Yeah, yeah. So he, he he's a pirate hunter, and he essentially wanted to find him to kill him to prove that he's the best. Yeah, but it's not like he was hunting him down. It was just he was his goal. I guess. But, I mean, I guess. But the only reason why he really joined Luffy's crew was to find him. 
Well, he was, it was to become the world's greatest swordsman. Well, but he knew he had to find a pirate on the sea. Well, he, he, yeah, was the greatest swordsman. But like I said, he wasn't necessarily hunting Mihawk down. But actually, so I will tell you that that was actually probably one of the first emotions I felt in the show was when he li- felt like he let Luffy down. Because mm-hmm. honestly, up until that point, I he really I felt like he no one really cared about anything. Kind of like what's the girl's name? Nami. Nami just like booked it because she didn't like right. So like that was the first emotion that any of the people really had for each other was this moment. So that that to me was the first time that I ever felt like an actual emotion a connection to the show because so far it's just so far it's just a show. But you um, also told me episode fifty three is or forty three. That's when summer run. It. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're getting there. there. Yep. You're getting there. It's starting to become uh, it's starting to become heavy. Um, good. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, uh, you want um, slight spoiler alert hmm. for this. Uh, Zoro tells the truth. I didn't hear you say that again. Uh, Zoro tells the truth. Zoro he, tells the truth. He will never lose another battle, and he doesn't. He does not. Okay. And does he fight this guy again? No. Oh, okay. They have not come face to face with Mihawk again. Okay. Not yet. Okay. But that's not the last time Mihawk's shown. And does he... So he doesn't lose another battle. So they see Mihawk. Do, does he see Mihawk? And he just knows he's not ready? Um, or like... I will say Zoro encounters Mihawk. I'm not going to tell you any more than that. Okay. And then so when and then when you said that he, he tells the truth, he will never lose another battle again. Mm-hmm. Does he struggle? Or is it all easy? Um... <clears throat> So most of his battles, I would say at this point, uh, going forward, there is a struggle, and that's because every battle that he's in, he's going beyond what he previously was, so he's always figuring something out. He's always figuring out his abilities. Okay. Um, so every battle that he's kind of in, yeah, it does become a struggle, but it's because he's like... He's almost nerfing himself because instead of fighting for to his full potential, he's like, I think I can do this, and I have to make it work. Okay. Speaking of swordsmen in anime, who do you think would win in a fight, Zoro or Kenshi? Oh, where's Carl? Fuck. Okay, I'll bring. The, I'll ask this next time. Don't even. Carl should be here on our next episode. There's going to be a new Two Rights crew member. Kenshin, like Roroni Kenshin. Mm-hmm. And his name is Kenshi. Yeah. In the um, show, right, 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 right. So, I'll ask I'm, you next time. Don't I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say this. We'll, I'm, we'll, we'll bring it up next time. You tell me. What I'm you gonna think, have to we'll... say Zoro. Okay. I'm, I, I haven't seen enough. I so and, and simply by the fact that there's more than just sword technique at play in one piece okay so whereas in where in kenshin a uh, romani kenshin that's like i don't think that's any like there's no magic powers or anything there's no there's no powers beyond your own strength and technique so kenshi is just ta- like extremely talented yeah like but, that's about it but there's none of this hakshi or whatever you call it uh, hockey hockey yeah because the zora end up tapping into that Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't ruin the story for me to no. know that, so you can tell me. No, and and and, and in <clears throat> fact, once you get involved in what it is and how it works and yada yada yada, you'll be like, "Oh, this was happening," and I can't really say more than that. <laughs> okay. Um, what else we got going on on this episode four? Do you have anything you wanted to talk about? I mean, I don't know. I, to... I think we're like an hour and ten in, or something like that. Fifty. Sixty minutes. So. Yeah, I mean, I I think I brought up ninety nine percent of the stuff. Yeah. Poop took a long time of it. Well, yeah. Fifty five minutes. Okay. Let's go. For, uh, try to go. Um. Yeah, other other than um, talking about being released and everything like that.
Oh, look this up. <laughs> yes. Just wake up. Wake up over there. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. I'm not trying to be demanding. I, I, I'm full of skepsis. What? Yep. O M. Oh, did be. Are you locked out? No, I made it so that your computer never shuts off, which you can change back anytime you want. I forgot what this is. I certainly don't know. What do you think it is based on the word? Does it say it again? Omphiloskepsis. An octopus. How do you spell it? O M P H A L O S K E P S I S. Is it one word? Yeah. Oh, do you say it like it's two? Omphiloskepsis? Well, you said it this, uh, last time. Comment, comments tell us the second time he said it, did it sound like it was two words? Did you get it? Okay, what do you think it means? Uh, some sort of octopus. I don't know. It's not an octopus. Is it? Is it like an adjective, a verb, which I I don't even know what those it are. Is, it is. It is. <coughs> um, uh, give me some sort of hint. It's being yeah. paranoid about something. What is it? All right, all right, let's get the definition. It's being paranoid of. Because I know that's what, like, it, obviously, like, it's the scientific Latin word. So, skepsis, like, skeptic. Skeptical, yeah. So, okay. so it's being s- scared or uh, being skeptical of many noises. So, there's two definitions that I'm looking at. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> for the Mer- Merriam Webster dictionary. So the first one is contemplation of one's navel as an aid to meditation. Yes. And there should be a picture that goes up with this. Fuck, we're not that technologically advanced right I now. I can get it. Dude, get it, it is hilarious. It is hilarious because it's a statue. You can even pull it up so you can laugh at it. Yeah. The contemplation of one's own belly button. Okay. What's the other definition? Oh, hold on. I'm looking at the picture. Because like, it's a statue and it's a bunch of statue and it's like a circle. It's a circle of dudes all facing outward. So it's not like they're facing inward, but it's a st- what? Do these statues have penises? Yes. Um, <laughs> they're not but, chopped off and put in a drawer or in a room. Nope. <laughs> no, no, I don't think this exists in the Vatican, but they're all standing there. Okay. Like I'm not this, sure if the camera really picked that up. Yeah, it's whatever. They're yeah. just staring at their belly buttons. It's it's an absurd thing. Have you ever thought about your belly button? Never. No? What about you guys? Sometimes. You think about your belly button? Sometimes because I don't like my belly button being touched. So sometimes there will be situations where I'll see something related to a belly button. And then I think about my belly button. And then I just kind of like, I'm just like, ugh. The only thing I ever think about about my belly button is how all the lint gets in there. Yeah, that is weird. Like how? How it's so deep in there. The thing is, is I don't even know where it comes from. And then sometimes it's a different color than the shirt I'm wearing. That's what I'm saying. Like where does this <laughs> lint come from? It's like it's always blue. Yeah, no, I've had blue, I've had green, I've had But that's why also like I found out cuz I wear a lot of athletic material shirts. Yeah. Two two things. One, Never, when I wear those shirts, never have lint in my belly button. And then two, it also doesn't clog up the lint trap in the washing machine because it's not like, it's not like fibers that fall oh, apart. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> but yeah. yeah. Have you, so you've never, so. I've never, con- I've, I've contemplated belly buttons in nature because it doesn't seem like. In nature? Yeah, because it doesn't seem like there are belly buttons in. Are we are the, are we the only animals with belly buttons and the thing is they all have umbilical cords they all have placentas as far as i I mean not all i'm not gonna say all but like cats dogs all that kind of stuff they have but they don't have belly buttons not all animals have umbilical cords oh i didn't say i'd be crazy i i I, like a giraffe right well i would assume a giraffe. i think all mammals would i took i took back my thing from saying all animals and changed it to like things such as dogs cats a lot of some mammals do like dolphins orangutans and whales yeah. They have belly buttons? Yes. Smaller mammals like cats, dogs, and mice um, also have them, but the scars do not form a large hole. Okay. And they are often covered by hair or fur. Okay. okay. So we got scars. We're just nasty when it comes to taking our umbilical cords out. Apparently, giraffes and cats have 
precision. They just eat it. That sounds more <laughs> rough than what we, we have. Right, doesn't it sound more rough? Yeah, it sounds more rough, but yet it's their scars are so like so. Essentially, a belly button is a scar, right? It's a permanent scar. That's rough. Is it attached to anything inside of you? Are your bones wet? I mean, you know what? I don't know if your bones are wet. They're. I think they're slippery and like they have like a lubrication over them. Because I cut my elbow open that one time. Yeah, but once and you I touched cut, it, it wasn't wet. But once my you bone cut, was out. but once you cut open, you are now cutting all of the stuff that holds your skin, blood in too, right? Like blood goes through veins. Well, right. In fact, yeah. let me discuss this here really quick. They have actually determined that they think that there is an extra organ inside of us that is that ba- there's like a lot. Lar- how do I put it? Basically, in between everything, there is a sac that carries our blood. So instead of inside of us, instead of just our organs all kind of being there and just floating, there's apparently like this sac that actually kind of coats them. Like everything is coated in this weird sac, and that's where how blood travels. And that's how if you have cancer in one part of your body, this is why they're thinking if you have a cancer in one part of your body, how it spreads to a completely different part of your body because of this weird new organ that they think that they're discovering. But yeah, anyways... Um, like blood's just not floating in you. It's got to go through veins. Like there's got to be through avenues, right? I'm not 100% certain. Yeah, we got to make sure that doesn't happen next time. If that's true, I don't think it's going to pick up on the microphones. No, that's fine. But uh someone should we say what it is? Oh, it's a washing machine going on. Oh, it's the wash. I thought someone just flushed the toilet. No, it's a washing machine. Okay. Um yeah, but I I don't know if there's just reservoirs of blood because like when you cut when they like cut your skull and they're in the brain, right? Yeah. I think they're they have to consistently suction out blood. But where is that blood coming? I think your brain does your brain float in blood? So are there are there ports inside your body in certain areas that actually just like where blood flows to and it's just kind of a consistent cavity? of blood well as our listeners would know i said fuck biology in episode one so i'm the last person to ask that question to in episode one or episode one or the unreleased episode episode one one. okay i don't remember that i listened to it two times i don't remember i wasn't more than that i edited it so i listened to it way more yeah i don't remember um are bones wet did you look that up they're they are wet the only thing that isn't wet is the epidermis the epidermis skin. skin yeah what about the inside of the skin yeah, it's all wet. Well, because keep in mind, we're made up of water. Oh, yeah. So yep, yep. pretty much everything is wet according to what? the... Mi- Sorry, continue, and I have a question. Okay. According to the Mitchell and the Mitchell? others in 1945, the brain and heart are a compromise of 73% water. The lungs are 83% water. Skin, 64% water. Muscles and kidneys are 79% water. And even bones... 31% water. Bones are 31% water. Oh wow. And we can still drown. <laughs> so I was go- so I w- my question was is what what do we have more of water or carbon in us? Carbon. Hooray for carbon. Yeah. I think that's the thing that they said about earth that really made life possible was the carbon. Yeah, hooray for carbon. But I don't, I don't know. I could just be speaking out of my rumpus. I mean, you're doing that too. Yeah. We're gonna drink the rest of this bottle, and our second episode is gonna be wild. Yeah. I mean, essentially, I need to eat something because all I had was sugary orange rolls today, and I'm, I think I'm crashing a little bit. Okay. So I might need Culver's. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, what did you ask? More carbon or water? That's mm-hmm. the last thing we're going to determine here. Yeah, more carbon or water in our body. This is what Google is telling me. 
Given that around 60 to 70 percent of the body is water, it's no surprise that oxygen and hydrogen are two of the body's most abundantly found chemical elements. Along with carbon and nitrogen, these elements combine for 96 percent of the body's mass. So by the sounds of that, there is more water than carbon. How? How does carbon? You know, I don't want to do math right now. It says we're carbon. Life thus far on this website has been the qualifier as we know it. Carbon-based life. I don't know. Okay. So we're ninety-six percent carbon and hydrogen and nitrogen, and we're also 70% water, we don't make sense. Okay, so we're 18.5% carbon. 18, so we're more water than carbon, technically. But we have more other stuff in us than water. Yeah. Even, well, though, even though we're 70% water, which is a large majority. Well, then, But also, if we really think about it, though, because we're talking about carbon is an element. Well, and water, water is, is not an element. Well, it, it's two elements. Well, it's two. What, well, it's technically three, right? It all depends. No. Well, it's two different elements, but it's three elements, part elements, because it's H2O. Well, yeah. We, right? So technically, it's made up of three parts of elements. Particles. Whatever. Atoms, yeah. But it's only two elements. No. Or one element if you're the avatar. Yeah. Oxygen is the most abundant element in the human body. Is it? Okay. Which, Which is, I guess makes sense. Well, no, because I figured hydrogen would be because there's two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. And yeah, water. but hydrogen is like a fraction of the size of oxygen. Okay, so are we going off of size or or, or if, parts? It doesn't matter. I guess <laughs> I guess there's that there's at a certain point that it doesn't matter. I, mean, I guess because like, because if you have a hundred thousand of something and one of another <laughs> thing. But a hundred thousand still fits inside this cup, and one of something fits inside this room. What do you have more of? Yeah, it's it's a difficult question. So I always run into this at trivia. I mean, I do. I run into this at trivia because people ask, and it has been Is both. water wet. Is water wet? It's been both. Water. There's there was uh, some anime like water wet thing where they were debating it it was fake it wasn't actually i think it was dubbed but people were like they were in this cavern and they were debating on whether water was wet or not because water itself cannot make itself wet it makes other things wet because it itself is the property anyways no that could have been gintama possibly just been gintama oh that was actual audio from it then i thought it was like people like dubbing it and like making fun of it no gintama is super meta and like it actually has a filler episode about explaining what a filler episode is. Okay, then it might have been that. I don't know, but uh, but in trivia they will ask what is the largest city, and so I always have to walk up to the person and ask them what they mean because sometimes they're asking for the largest in area, and sometimes they're asking for largest in population. What's the answers? I can't remember. Be- well, because it's not necessarily what is the largest. It's what's the largest in, like, a category. Like, what is the largest city in Wisconsin? Is that Milwaukee? Well, I think I think the answer would be Milwaukee is the largest in population. But I think if you looked at area, it would be Madison. I don't know if that's true or not. Is it? Possibly. But there, but that's kind of one of the things, right? Cause like, Madison's the capital. It is the capital, but I think it. I think it might area wise. I think it might be larger than area of Milwaukee proper. Possibly, yeah, I could be wrong. I'm just. I'm just using it as an example of what I mean. But but the answer has been sometimes it's population, and sometimes it's by area. Hmm. Right, because like okay, well, because if you ask what's what's the largest state, the largest state's going to be Alaska. But if you were going by population, it wouldn't be Alaska. So that's why I always have to ask because sometimes they mean by population. Same thing with the Great Lakes. What's the largest Great Lake? Or what's the smallest Great Lake? The largest is the answer is superior the, always. But what's the smallest? There is smallest surface area and then there's smallest 
volume, and that's two different answers. So, uh, okay, yeah. And that was two rights make a wrong. Episode four. Hello, Namasha. Yeah, we can hit off on everything. <laughs>